On July 28, 1996, a nearly complete skeleton was found along the Columbia River in Kennewick, Washington on land owned by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. These bones, thought to be quite old, were turned over to an anthropologist by the county coroner. A month later, anthropologist Dr. James Chatters held a sensational press conference. He reported that the bones were among the oldest ever found in North America and had Caucasian features. The long narrow face, prominent chin, and tall stature of Kennewick man differed markedly from Paleo-Indian remains. A now famous facial reconstruction done by James Chatters in Central Washington University's Tom McClellan shows the Caucasian man resembling the actor Patrick Stewart. Radiocarbon dating results place Kennewick man's remains at over 9,000 years old, making these remains one of the oldest ever discovered in the Americas. James Chatters was interviewed for a documentary on the Discovery Channel science program about the Kennewick man remains. Listen carefully to the following clip. Kennewick man's age is nothing less than mind-boggling. He is over 9,000 years old, a man who lived before 7,000 BC, and one of the oldest and most complete Americans ever found. And yet, Kennewick man is a puzzle. Scientists have long believed that the first and oldest Americans were Native Americans. But with his unusual features, Kennewick man doesn't look like a Native American. Little did they know, this skull would take us thousands of years back in time and forever change our notion of who were the first Americans. The coroner brings the skull to forensic anthropologist Jim Chatters. This is a first glance, so I don't have a sense of time on him. All I have is just his physical features to work with. The bone was in very good condition, good and sound, and, and, and show a lot of weathering or dissolution or anything, so it appeared to be relatively young because of that. Very long, narrow brain case, fairly distinct brow, and a nose that just jumps off his face pronounced nose. These are all characteristics more often see on Western Eurasian skeletons, European skeletons. The skull appears European, not Native American. These are all characteristics more often see on Western Eurasian skeletons, European skeletons. The skull appears European, not Native American. Following that earth-shattering announcement, American Indian tribes sued and demanded repatriation of the remains for reburial before it could be studied by scientists. This has occurred in a number of other instances when non-Indian remains have been found throughout the United States. Many of these have been reburied before scientific study and have been lost forever to the scientific community. Eight anthropologists, including two from the Smithsonian sued for the right to study the remains. On April 6, 1998, the Army Corps of Engineers horrified America's scientific community when trucks began dumping rocks and dirt on the site where Kennewick Man was found. Earth construction of Orfino, Idaho was paid $160,000 by the Army to cover 250 feet of the Columbia River shoreline with rocks, dirt, and trees. Indian activists praised the Army's actions. Thus, the area surrounding one of the most significant archaeological finds was purposely destroyed by the very government who should be protecting such a find. Such behavior on the part of the U.S. government is eerily reminiscent of that of the Islamic government of Afghanistan demolishing ancient Buddhist statues in order to enforce a single historical worldview. Specifically, the U.S. government sided with Indian tribes who show no physical relationship to these remains, and in fact the evidence clearly shows that Kennewick man's remains are of Caucasoid origin. It is clear that the Clinton administration destroyed these remains mainly because these findings do not conform to the politically correct template, and lie that the Indians were first. 
In fact the publicly available information presented in this documentary clearly shows that modern American Indians are far from being the first or sole possessors of North America in ancient times. As a side note, at the time this documentary was produced, the legal dispute regarding who would obtain possession of these remains still had not been resolved.